start reading the last chapter of the Patanjali Yoga Darshan. This is a unique book and which is the only book which is helping us to understand our own mind and how to control our mind and if we can control our mind, what happens afterwards? So we become so powerful that we can control almost everything of this nature, external nature, internal nature. Even we can become God ourselves. We can become the Brahman ourselves. This is the unique the condition that the human being can reach only by controlling his thoughts. So this is the wonderful way he is explaining. So first, let us uh, start with this loka. Mono Buddha Hamkara. Chitani Naham. Nacha Shotra Juve. Nacha Grana Nitri. Nacha Bhuma Bhumi. Nate Jona Bayu. Chidananda Rupa Shiboham 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 Those who are attending this class from the beginning is almost the two years we are continuing and we know that in the very first chapter which is called Prathamapada is the Samadhi, the first chapter but the technical words that has been used Pada, Prathama Pada is the first is Samadhi. So this is the uniqueness, this is the beauty of the Indian scriptures they always tell what is the goal, Laksha. What is the goal, where you are supposed to go. Before reading this, nowadays most of the people, they will be giving very catchy name in the book and when you purchase and afterwards you find nothing actually in the content, in the whole book. But in those days, they are truthful. Very clearly they will mention that this is the thing, this is the place, this is the idea you are going to achieve. What is that? Samadhi. So that is what is Samadhi? That he will explain. How to reach to the Samadhi? That they will explain. What are the problems to reach over there? That he is explaining. So whole thing will be there about the Samadhi. So the first chapter we have already studied that is the Samadhi Pada. That means the chapter on Samadhi. And second chapter, uh, that is the goal, but how to reach, I don't know. It's not like that. Immediately, obviously, it will say how to reach over there. See the speciality in the Bhagavad Gita? There also, the first chapter, of course, Arjuna is going on crying, giving the explaining why we should not fight, etc., etc. So oft, after all, when the Lord Sri Krishna is opening his mouth, what is that? Jnana Yoga. First is Samkhya Yoga, Jnana. Samkhya means Jnana, the highest Jnana. And what is that highest Jnana? Atman, Brahman, all-pervading. And it can never be come to an end, never. It was always as it is, it will be as it is. So this is the 
Samkhya Yoga. In the second chapter, the very second chapter, that means the first chapter of the Gita, we can say. First chapter is nothing but the Arjuna's asking question, creating the problem, a situation, so that the Bhagavan, he is now explaining. So this is called the second chapter in the Bhagavad. And after the second chapter, when he is telling that Samkhya means the Atman, and Atman is all pervading, you cannot keep. Then from the third, fourth, fifth, continuously, the Jnana Yoga, Karma Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Dhyana Yoga, the same process. The beginning, it says, what is the goal? Second, next step, they will be explaining how to reach over there. Here also we find sadhana pada practices. And what happens? I am, I know the goal and I am practicing. Then what is the result? So they say the result too. And what is the result? Here in the aphorism, it says bibhuti pada, the third chapter, bibhuti. Bibhuti means psychic power. In psychic power, it is not the goal, but if you want, you can get those powers. It's not the goal, but you will get it. In the Bhagavad Gita also, Sri Krishna is showing so many things can be achieved, can be understood very easily. All these things are possible. So here we also find in the third chapter is the Bibhuti, the psychic power. And we know the psychic power. One can enter it to another's body. One sitting over here can travel to any place. Manaso Jabiyo. Jabiyo means the powerful. It is more powerful than the mind itself. So like this, all the Bibhuti Pada, now we are going to start the final that is called Kaivalya Pada. What is that Kaivalya Pada? Liberation. Liberation from where? From all the bondages. And we know in Hinduism, bondage means me and mine, that thought. We cannot think of without me and mine, but that is the main cause of our suffering. And sometimes we are very happy, and sometimes it is so painful. Why? Because of the ignorance. And for a few years only, for a few years, if we practice, then it is only joy, joy, and joy. Ma Sharadamani Devi, he is not telling all these complicated uh, things of the yoga and the jnana, nothing. She only said, if you want peace, don't find fault with others. This is the first. Second, know that the whole world is your own. Whole world, everything is your own. The moment I think, oh, they all belong to me, how can I be angry with them? How can I think to do something harmful to them? No. Well, I can go and try to rectify them in a modest way, but I'm not going to criticize them. So this is the way the mind is always tranquil. When the Inger soul, the German philosopher, he was uh, having the conversation with Swamiji and Swam said, I want to squeeze my life in my own way to enjoy the, my lemon. And Swamiji said, I also want to do that, but my process is better because whoever is enjoying all that in that enjoyment I'm there so my enjoyment is much more than yours so life is like that so here the kaivalya pada liberation that is the goal of yoga that is the goal of jnana the yoga actually based on the Samkhya. Samkhya yoga. Samkhya means jnana. Samkhya is the philosophy of Indian philosophy. Samkhya, yoga, and six systems of it. 
the Samkhya and Yoga, they are clubbed together. And this Samkhya philosophy, the Kapila Muni, and the Yoga, Patanjal. So another Muni, another thinker. So they are combining. Patanjali is taking the help of the philosophy of Samkhya. The Samkhya and Yoga. So here we are, but in the last chapter, they are also, they give the hint. What is that hint? In the 53rd sloka, 53rd, we call it aphorism. Jati, Lakshana, Deshaihi, Anyata, Anabachedat, Tullayoho, Tata Pratipatihi. So that we explain those things which cannot be differentiated by species, signs, and place, even that will be discriminated by the above concentration. So that Bhivuti Pada. One person can immediately understand in the life of Sri Ramakrishna, what do you find Sri Ramakrishna? He is declaring that some white skinned people, they are coming to me. He has not seen the white skinned people. Only perhaps when he went to visit the central Calcutta, he saw one young boy of the European boy, the British boy, and maybe one or two cook, that they, he also went. So one or two persons like that. But then he is telling, I saw all of them are coming and accepting me. Me means my ideology. So jati, the species, and the time, the space, nothing. That time it was impossible to think. And he said it, declared it openly. And now we find so many people are coming and joining. This is unthinkable. So this is the 53rd aphorism. And the last aphorism, they say Tarakam, not last, last but one. This is a 54th, Tarakam, Sarva Vishayam, Sarvatha Vishayam, Akramam, Cheti, Vivekajam, Jnanam. Don't be afraid of those words. No. So these are the Sanskrit words and the old ancient Sanskrit words, mostly we can say. So that's why it is Tarakam Sarva Vishayam. Even the, our Swamis who have translated, they have used so difficult Bengalis almost the same Sanskrit, then what is that? Because they were trained in that language naturally. Tarakam Sarva Vishayam, he has realized directly and hence he can understand everything. Now Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, he is explaining in his own life when they, were, they all went to see the high tide in the Ganges, then afterwards he was asking to Master Mahashay. Master Mahashay was in those days Amy. He was a master naturally. He attended the university. He was a very knowledgeable person. Sri Ramakrishna was asking him, how this thing happened? Can you explain? Then Master Mahashay sat over there, Sri Ma, who has noted the gospel. And he drew over there that this is the earth, this is the sun, this is the moon. It is rotating like this. And when they are coming so close, naturally they are attracting each other and all these things. Maybe hardly two, three minutes or five minutes, Sri Ramakrishna said, no, no, no. I'm getting headache of all this. No, I don't like to learn. <laughs> I don't like to learn. That means he doesn't know. He knew everything because of the yogi. Don't think that that's because we are the monks of the Ramakrishna mission, simply thinking like that. No. He knew each and everything. And naturally, he knew what is going to happen and when. Ma Sharada Mani Devi, who never disclosed any miraculous power, even in her life also, you can see so many things are happening. Even the when Swami Vivekananda, a personality like him, he came to mother and said, 
whatever prayer I am doing to Thakur, he's not answering at all. I'm trying to do this, I'm trying to do that, but nothing is coming up. Then the what mother said, whatever you thought is going to happen. You need not to worry. Whatever you are trying to do, it will be successful. And a day will come when the whole humanity will consider you as the great personality. So that today, each and every one, everywhere, because our Prime Minister is a follower of Vivekananda ideology, is a lover of Swami Vivekananda, wherever he goes, in other countries, they are somehow practicing to pronounce the name of Vivekananda correctly, to impress him. Maybe to get the market, that is a different thing, but even in the, the Canada and America and many other places, all of their people, they are remembering Swami Vivekananda. So this is the speciality. Why? Someday people will understand. And moment they get the book and some writings, some words, and immediately everything will be changed. So this is, he says, Tarakam Sarva Vishayam. Tarakam means direct knowledge. Sarva Vishayam, you know, in, it is very simple. All subjects, everything, Sarvatha Vishayam Akramam Cheti. This called Vivekajam Jnanam is a terminology. Vivekajam Jnanam means the direct experience, Aparaksha Anubhuti. Shankaracharya, he has a small book. Aparaksha, not taking the help of anything, directly I can see. When I go and see something that is indirectly in the reflection, or through somebody that is not in Bengali or in a simple language, it's called Pratyaksha, direct. And it's a Aparaksha. They are more clear, not taking any help. And sometimes some people have the idea by reading books or hearing from someone or seeing a movie, a picture. It's not like that, direct. Again, the Narendranath went to Sri Ramakrishna with excellent question that he asked to almost everyone. And he said, Sir, have you seen God? What was the answer? Those who have read the biography of Sri Ramakrishna, friends, I must request you, please read that book, Biography of Sri Ramakrishna. It's a unique. In the beginning, you may say, Achha, okay, what is this? Then slowly, slowly, you will see the excellent book because you are the seeker of the truth. You want to know God. You are, today it is raining and weather is so bad. Still you are coming over here to listen for one hour. Why? Because it is not me. It is not the subject. It is your love. Love to know God. Love to know the truth. So you must read Sri Ramakrishna's biography. So this is a unique book and it gives the whole picture. Now, now here we find that he is having all this power. The moment he asked the question, immediately what was his answer? Yes, I have seen him. I see him more clearly than I see you. Why more clearly? Because I don't see through the eyes. I see within myself. But the eye, when I am looking at something, I may mistake, I may make mistake because sometimes when you see a person, oh, then one boy, <laughs> young boy came from a college, university, and you know the similar type of faces. So I told, oh, you came last time. He said, this is the first time I'm coming. I'm the, oh, I'm sorry. And this way, sometimes some common faces and immediately, of course, there's a Swamiji who is almost 90 years old. And one gentleman, he looked at me and told, Swamiji, you look so close to that Swami, almost same. 
I told him, maybe, but you should check your eyes with the doctor. He was a 90 years old man. He cannot be any, so you cannot. Anyway, sometimes the eyes are also deceiving us. It is not like that. Not even taking the help of the eyes or, the, or my own eyes. I am directly seeing that is called Vivekajam Jnanam or Tarakam, direct knowledge. Satta Purushayoho Shuddhi Samme Kaivallam Iti. Now the last aphorism, 55th aphorism, uh, here in the third chapter, it comes to this, the perfection or the liberation or the Kaivalya as it calls, is attained when the mind becomes as pure as the Atman itself. Look at it. When the mind becomes as pure as the Atman itself, then what happens? Kaibalyam, Mukti, liberation. Actually, I am then I am transformed into that great if we call it as an entity, entity. The I, I become Atman. That's why when all the thought waves of the mind have been stilled, no, good or bad, nothing is there. Good wave or the bad wave or different type of thoughts, nothing is there. Everything is same. No wave at all. Mind means the thoughts only. And when we are sleeping, that also, that time also, we are seeing the dreams. Thoughts are passing constantly, non-stop. No one can control that. But sometimes, unknowingly, we go to a state where dreamless sleep. We are not seeing the dream even. So that is the proof. My body is inactive. Mind is inactive, but still I can remember that I didn't see any dream, but I slept. Then who remembered that I didn't see any dream? Who is that? Not the body, not the mind. Then what is that? So that is the question. And through that only, they reach to this conclusion, there must be something beyond mind. Mind is the most in intelligent, but beyond mind, there is something. And that beyond mind, that thing is called Atman. Not knowing, we are every day, almost every day, each and every one of us reaching to that state. But when we try to reach there consciously, then all this problem comes. But that is sure that we can reach because the proof is there, Atman is there. So this is the Atman. It says that when all the thought waves in the mind have been stilled, the mind holds nothing but pure, undifferentiated consciousness. Uh, this state is one with Atman. In this state, I am one with Atman. Shuddha buddhi, Shuddha Atma, Ag. Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, he said, he didn't study Patanjal Jagadarshan. But how could he say like this, the same sentence, same words? Realization. His own realization. There sometimes some people like us, when you are explaining, we are explaining intellectually. But some people like Sri Ramakrishna, whatever they are telling, is from the experience. His own disciple, he was from Bihar, and totally illiterate, and his name was Laktu Ram. So Bengalis they used to call him Latu Maharaj. He was very famous. Afterwards, Swami Vivekananda gave his sannyasa name Adbhuta Ananda. Adbhuta Ananda. This is special. Why special? 
Because when we, the educated people, we can remember so many things, and when we are trying to control our mind, purify our mind, trying to travel towards God, we get the help of books, the discussions, and many things. But person like him, he has nothing but his own mind. Whatever he heard from his Guru Sri Ramakrishna, that he was remembering. And then what happened? When the Brahmacharins of the Belumot, they were studying the Upanishad, and they were explaining, he had the habit of all the time lying down, covering his whole body with a blanket. And he was lying like that. And when he heard they were discussing about the inside the human being, there is light, tremendous light. Immediately he got up and said, I have seen it. I have seen it. He is telling with my experience. Can you imagine? So that proves that whatever written in those scriptures can be achieved, can be. It's not just someone wrote in a fancy way. No. They are all realized things. So step by step when you go, we see that this is possible. So, and Sri Ramakrishna is telling, Shuddha Buddhi, Shuddha Atma is same. The pure mind and the Atman the same. Atman is always pure. Why pure? The word always we use. In the, any spiritual line, they will be saying purity, purity, purity. What is that purity? Yeah, the purity means no I consciousness, no selfishness, and that is called purity. So this purity, and that's why Swami Vivekananda, when he wrote about Sri Ramakrishna, he wrote, Niranjana, Nararupadhara, Nirguna, Gunamoy. Niranjana means that pure. Anjana means black. That nothing is there, it's totally pure. And why he is there? Because for the devotees he is coming. So Sri Ramakrishna, Swami Vivekananda is mentioning Niranjana. And this Niranjana, that God who is pure, who is not having anything in his mind, I consciousness, Sri Ramakrishna could not mention I. He used to say this one. So showing his body, he used to say this, that this I, and he's totally absent. No ego, no selfishness, Niranjana. And some, there is a, a group of people, and they always, their God is Niranjan, Alek Niranjan. In Hinduism, you know, there are so many paths are there. And that is the freedom they always get. There's the same coat you have to put on. If it is not fitting, then you have to reduce your body or increase your body. Not like that. This is total freedom. And this group of people, they call God as Alek Niranjana. A completely selfless Vedanta. But they are very ordinary people. They will be all roaming around here and there. And their only mantra is Niranjana, Alek Niranjan. Whenever they are greeting each other or meeting some people, they will be shouting Alek Niranjan. So these are the Niranjan. Why Niranjana? Now we know in the, from the Vedanta aphorism, it is the same Atman. Why? Because there is no thought. And where is, there is no thought, then what happens? Where is the mind? The mind is the thought waves. If the mind is not there, what remains? Atman. So that is the main. And now in the fourth, last chapter, how to get it? Because it says in the last chapter, if you are practicing, then you can get the psychic power. And here in the very first sloka, aphorism, it says, Janma, Aushadi, Mantra, 
तप समाधि जा सिद्ध यह सिद्ध सिद्ध मीन्स द सक्सेस वेर फ्रॉम द सक्सेस कम सक्सेस इन अचीविंग दिस पावर देन इट सेज जन्म बाई बर्थ वेन भगवान श्री राम कृष्ण वॉज बॉर्न बाई बर्थ नो वन ट्रेन डिम ही नेवर प्रैक्टिस बाई बर्थ ही वॉज हैविंग दैट सिद्धिज एंड देन Oshadi. Sometimes some people they use some medicine, drugs, and by that they will be seeing some hallucinations. हमने देखा तो sometimes if you go, then they will be the swamis. They will be claiming that they have seen these, they have seen that. It's a hallucination, and slowly, slowly they go into that and then lose themselves because there is no control afterwards on their minds. they lose that control totally they go in an hallucinated world like the children they will be seeing the living things in the doll or in something and they'll be talking with that doll do you think it's really just like vedanta the pure vedanta even in that doll life is there do you think the child is seeing like that no just imagination so it is not the that way the success the success is when truly we you are striving so janma because of the past life all impressions are coming and then it is coming then the mantra the sometimes some mantras are there is so powerful if we really after the, those mantras it really happens it is possible those mantras are so powerful but not that all are able to utilize those mantras then tapah what is that tapah the mortification some people they will be standing the swami vivekananda we will read that passage from swami vivekananda to get the total explanation and some people if you go when it is so cold winter the freezing cold they are standing in the that river and taking the name of god or trying to meditate so that type of mortification some people they'll be raising their hands years together the hand that they have raised either left or right just became very lean because years together they are holding the hand like this swami ji will give that example and then samadhi samadhi ja siddhaya siddha means the success comes from samadhi the concentration and that is the best way here we find that janma aushadi mantra tapa samadhi that means five janma aushadi mantra tapa and samadhi and the janma they it says by birth even the kapil muni the founder of the samkha yoga by birth he knew everything and the small little boy the kapila then afterwards the kapila he gave the instructions to his mother devahuti his mother's name was devahuti and he gave all the instructions and the son is giving the instructions advices spiritual advices where from he got this but by birth sometimes some people the small small kids they can memorize the whole gita or a part of gita is not simply practice but some portion of their mind must be already it was there in their mind in the past life so in this life the moment the little help is coming immediately all that is memorized so that way it proves and then sri ramakrishna kapila that proved that by birth it is possible and the mandabha muni he got the siddhi success through drugs in the mantra we know when that uh, through the mantra in almost in all our tantra puranas through the mantra so many things they did they used to do now 
we will read from Swami Vivekananda and you will see how the Vivekananda is explaining. Vivekananda, before that, this one. Some are born with psychic power as a result of their struggle in previous lives and not psychic powers merely but real spiritual powers. Such are those most mysterious of all human beings, the natural saints. They get this type of powers just by birth who are filled with the knowledge of love of God even in early childhood and grew up seemingly untouched by the temptation of worldliness. The Dhruva, their lives we read, but very recently historical, the many personalities are there. Mirabai, Mirabai, a little girl when the father just jokingly said, Krishna is your husband, immediately she thought it, Krishna is my husband. So many times we say so many things to our children and they accept that for that moment. Afterwards they also forget, we also forget. We are not so many serious. But the, for the Mira, that was a live achievement. No, I will be only that Krishna, Krishna and Krishna. Giridhari Lal, the Mira used to say. And this, see, how it is possible? The small little girl just heard about that and immediately took it so seriously and dedicated her whole life and when she was facing so many difficulties in her life. But she was constantly, doggedly holding that idea, Krishna is my husband. How it is possible? So this proves by birth they are devoted, they are spiritual genius and they are natural saints who are filled with the knowledge and love of God even in early childhood and grow up seemingly untouched by the temptations of the worldliness. In the Bhagavad Gita we find Arjuna is asking this doubt and so good question he is asking Ayati Sraddhayopetu Yoga chalita manasaha aprapya yoga sam siddhim kam gatim krishna gachati. Here the Arjuna is asking the Krishna, the God, you know so many things, can you please tell me? The people who are trying to realize God in this life, but they couldn't realize God, what happens to them? They are totally destroyed because they could not achieve God in this life and they could not enjoy this life. Then what is the purpose of their striving? They are lost, they are, he is asking. He is asking, suppose a man has faith but does not struggle hard enough. His mind wanders away from the practice of yoga and he fails to reach perfection. What will become of him then? The Krishna is answering, Parth. Nahi beha namutra binasha stasya vidyate, nahi kalyana krit kaschit durgatim tata gachati. Here he is addressing the Parth as a tata, my beloved son, my beloved one, the child, tata. In Sanskrit, when they call Tata, that means very beloved, but the junior ones. He is addressing because now he is the God, all knowing God. So he is not that, he is simply sometimes some people are asking, people like us, and when we are replying, whatever we have heard, whatever we have read, from there only we are giving. It's not. When the Sri Krishna is giving the replies from his own experience because he is God himself. And that is directly, that's why this moment 
he is addressing Sri that Arjuna as Tata. My child, my beloved child. So this is the thing. What is that? Naibeha na amutra. Here and in heaven. My those who are trying to reach me or doing some good work are not going to lose anything in this life and after life too. Look at that assurance, the promise. Naibeha namutra binasha stasya vidyate. Binasha is not destroyed. Nahi kalyana krit kaschit. Those who are trying to help others, those who are trying to do good to others, those who are thinking good, praying for others. Durgatim tata gachati. Durgatim means the below they go. And in this life, we have got so many good opportunities. But unfortunately, if we misutilize this opportunity, because we are human beings, we have lot many uh, the opportunities before us. If we misutilize that, what will happen? We will go down and again we will take the birth of maybe, God forbid, the serpents and the very, very bad type of births. So this is what Sri Krishna is telling. Nothing like that will happen. That's called Durgati. It's not Durgati means some miseries and problems. But it is the Durgati means they will born in a very low category and then they will be suffering, suffering and suffering. And he is telling, even if a man falls away from the practice of yoga, he will still win the heaven of the doers of good deeds and dwell there many long years. Then afterwards he said, Prapya punnakritam lokan ushitva shashati samaha shuchinam srimatam gehi yoga brashta Vijayate. Yoga Bhrashta means one who could not make success, ultimate success, realizing God or realizing Atman. Where he will go? God himself is telling, Sri Krishna himself is telling that because the good deeds that they did, because of that, they will go and take birth, Shuchi Nam and Sri Matam Gehi. They will then regain that spiritual discriminant, discriminancy and which he acquired in his former body. And so he will strive harder than ever to for perfection. Because of his practices in the previous life, he will be driven on towards union with Brahman even in spite of himself. This sometimes even we do not know that what is going to happen to us. The yesterday some devotees they were asking how you came in this movement, the Ramakrishna mission. Then I was telling, actually I was never aware that I'll become a monk. I'll never aware. But something happened and all things started moving like that. Then I became the monk. So this way, is it me that I am doing? No, here is very ex clear explanation is this way. He says, because of his practices in the previous life, he will be driven on toward the union with Brahman, even if in spite of himself. He doesn't know, in spite of himself, it will drag him over there. So that proves the past karma, that proves the past life, that proves that it is possible for each and every one to become perfect. And that's why Swamiji is telling it is so good. Why we are suffering? Because of our past life, past karma. Good. Because that proves now if we do good, now, now if we think good, now if we try to be good, what happens? 
next life, surely we are going to enjoy a better life, better achievement, surely. It's not just simply some people are telling like that, oh, if you do this and you will go to heaven. Not like that. This is all experiences. That is why they said in this way, and certain drugs may be produced, the visions, but these are invariably psychic. And then afterwards, Swamiji is telling the power of words. What are the power of words? There's a mantra. So much powerful. Tremendously powerful. One person, he wanted to become a monk. And you know, the monk means mostly they don't go in the family, the bondages. The moment you are married, it's nothing wrong, but you are now by, by so many your responsibilities. You cannot simply say no. You have to continue and you have to follow, you have to practice and perform your responsibilities and duties properly. So that is called dharma. When the Arjuna wanted to become monk standing in that war field, the Krishna almost slapped him. So this is not the time that you can think in this way. This is the time you have to fight, you have to kill. So this is the real dharma. So when I am in that, my dharma is to perform my duties perfectly. That is sufficient. And that is why they say, the power of words. What is the power of words? Mantra. The mantras are the very, very powerful. When the mantra, someone is taking the mantra, receiving the mantra, it is not that he is accepting, it is given to him. Oh, Ami, Nichi. No, it is not. You have taken, you have been given, you have been chosen. And what is that? Very simple word. <laughs> Young boy, he was influenced by the communist movement, but somehow he was curious to know what is mantra. And I was also very young, I couldn't understand. So I recommended, and he went, he got the mantra. Then he came and told, oh, these are the words I knew. It's a wrong thing. Because that particular word coming out of the guru, it's not ordinary. It's a traditionally, it is is mystically powerful, the words. How? Just believe and practice. So that's why the Swami Vivekananda is telling, there are certain sacred words called mantras, which have power when repeated under proper conditions to produce these extraordinary powers. We are living in the midst of such a mass of miracles day and night, that we do not think anything of them. There is no limit to man's power, the power of words and the power of mind. See how, when a person has come, and if we just think, oh, this is a, okay, whatever, he encourages him. And the children, when they are coming, please bless us so that in the exam we do good. Can I really bless? Or can I tell him anything? No. But I encourage you, oh, you have studied so well. You are going to do better over there. You need not to worry. These encouragements, immediately he gets much power. He is capable, even without my words. But these words are giving him much more encouragement and confidence. So that is the reason. When we are leaving, we always, as Sri Ramakrishna said, if you repeat the Durga name three times, Shiva will protect you. These are the words only. But if you have faith, the moment you are thinking, uh, you, are, you are just uttering Durga, Durga, Durga before starting your car or driving, immediately you think that the protection of the Shiva is coming. You have to believe. And the moment you believe, it really happens. There are many, many things, many times it happens. So the mantra, the powers of that mantra, then the mortification, and he said that, you find that in every religion, mortification and asceticisms have been practiced. 
In these religious conceptions, the Hindus always go to the extremes. You will find men with their hands up all their lives until their uh, hands wither and die. Men keep standing day and night until their feet swell. We have also seen this. The people are practicing this austerity. Why? Just to gain some power. And by that, what happens? Because of the tremendous men, physical pain, their minds are concentrated. And by that way, when the other thoughts are not coming for a long time, they, their mind becomes tranquil because physical pain, as they are bearing, bearing, bearing in the beginning, is terrible. But afterwards, they can easily bear that. But the, in the meantime, mind is not attached with any other, other things. The so mind is becoming tranquil. In that mind, some supernatural powers manifest. Only to achieve that, they do this. But this is not advisory. In our, at least in our cases, they don't. Through such practices, powers, the siddhis can be attained, Swamiji is telling. But he is telling concentration, the last one. Concentration is the samadhi. Meditation and concentration. Yoga, Chitta, Vritti, Nirodha. The 21st June, I think, they are going to declare that the yoga day for the all over the world, they will practice yoga. I went to Canada, their, the capital. There I was saying, what is it? The huge lawn and the both the sides thousands of people practicing yoga and there is no teacher they are playing the the cd and their instructions are coming do this do that and hundreds of these people they are doing it the yoga so now the day has come so sometimes some waves come is the yoga so all they are now they are, they are asking me to go and show some yoga. I, 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 didn't, I never practice yoga. My yoga is totally different. So if you like, I can invite some of people whom I know, I can send them. But they are, here in Chicago, they are going to organize. 4,000 people are coming. They'll be practicing yoga for the whole day. But at the same time, they are keeping some options for discussions. They're inviting me, but I don't know whether I'll be able to go. This yoga actually, ultimately, that's not physical, but more and more important thing, mental. That's called concentration. And this concentration can come when there is no selfishness. When the full of love, love for each and every being without attachment. That we have to remember. Yesterday, the, some ladies came, they are also doing some good works, they are from the Christian, uh, some denominations of the Christians. And they are also doing very good work. I was really wondering, almost the same as Vedanta. Then I asked them, when you are helping people, thinking for them, praying for them, do you think that you are helping them? Then one of them, they replied, no, we think that we are helping Jesus Christ, our God who has come in that form. That is the main thing. The Swami Vivekananda is telling, Shiva Jnane Jiva Sheva. You have to think that the Shiva has come, the God has come. And then only you are helping the God in that fashion. Some are hungry, some are illiterate, some needs medicine, some needs some other guidances, some needs inspiration. All these things and Shiva Jnani Jiva Sheva. Only little change. The moment you think I am helping, almost in all the government, they have the department, social welfare department. They're doing the same thing. They're helping the people. And when they're helping, they're thinking we are helping the poor people. Only little change in the, the mind. Who am I to help? I am a very humble person. What is there in my power to help? I can give little money or I can utilize some people to do that. What else I can do? 
So this is the thing. One young man yesterday, he was talking with me. He was thinking that I should go back to India. You know, when we come far away from here, our uh, the love for our country, it increases. So he is thinking that I have earned a lot of money. Now I should go back. Then I will call the, all the villagers and particularly those who are cultivating. I will help them. At least whole district will be developed. I told don't leave the job. You go and try there for one month. You will say nobody will listen to you. They will say, have you brought some green money? Green money from America? The dollar? Give it to us and go back. Earn more and bring it more. <laughs> we will look after ourselves. So that is the situation. So thinking that utopian idea, no. So be very practical. I am helping only one person, but with a great dedication. Can we really help this whole world? Can we turn it to a very good place? Swami Vivekananda, the advocate of all the time, work, 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 work for the poor, for the illiterate, downtrodden. And then he said, it's just like the dog's curly tail. As long as you are holding it straight, it is straight. The moment you leave, again it is curly. Then why we are doing it? For our own benefit. What is that benefit? I am serving my God. I cannot change the whole world. But I can at least rectify my own thoughts. So that is called spiritual way of serving. The service they hear it says, the concentration, the samadhi, how it comes? Thinking of God. How is that God? Only again, the one young boy came and he was telling, he was visiting some holy person, a lady, and she was doing the arati. And they went and she told, will you stay for some time for your prasad? They told, no mother, I cannot, I have to leave. She stopped the arati, went inside the kitchen, brought some food and gave it to them. But you were doing arati. And you stop that. But what is there? This is also my Gopal. You are also my Gopal. And you have come here and you are leaving without food. You cannot leave. So I am offering food to my Gopal. Leaving. Who will be going away right now. And this Gopal he will be here. I will look after him afterwards. Yeah. See ordinary. But excellent idea. And that is called the spiritual upliftment. The moment you can think in this only thinking and the whole personality is changed. Whole life is changed. And what comes afterwards and it says that the high spiritual upliftment and that gives you two things. Total fearlessness and complete joy. Because you are fearless, why? Because you know that I am not going to end. And the joy because I am in everything. So that is the ultimate. And this is the, uh, the last chapter, first sloka we have studied. And in our next class, again we will study about uh, this chapter from the second onwards. A little difficult, Jatantara, Parinama, Prakriti, Apuranat, the wonderful way is explaining. The life that we know and the life that they are explaining is totally different. The wonderful knowledge about the life. And it goes on and on and on. It's not at all af afraid. So that we will learn in our next class. We will study that. And as we always do, let us chant this mantra and then we will conclude. Aham nirvikalpo nirakara rupo bibhutvacya sarvatra Sarvendriyanam 
नवासंगत नैब मुक्तिर्न मेया चिदानंद शिवोहम शिवोहम चिदानंद शिवोहम शिवोहम आई एम ऑस्पीशियस and i am all is full with joy chid knowledge anand sarupa sat chid anand sarupa i am a speciousness and that is the ultimate of gyana that is the ultimate of yoga thank you friends and uh, today is the last day of the book fair and our volunteers they have gone to that book fair in you know the very excellent place that we have got in that book fair the dearborn station exactly the moment you come out our stall but there are more our volunteers than the purchasers because <laughs> most of the people that they are lot of crowd is there in where they are selling the food items lot of people are there in a queue but where they are selling the food but for the intellect less people so there our volunteers are very sincerely they are there and if you happen to go to this downtown today they are also still there they will be there and i was wondering i was telling the when swami vivekananda came out in 1893 he stepped on that particular place and by chance this time this is the first time we are there the first we are we got that particular place where vivekananda the first stepped over there and we are there with vedanta books and the vedanta which vivekananda expounded so this is how we are trying to reach out to the people and the people who are coming there totally unknown we could never reach out to these people unless we were there so that is a good thing and secondly as i already told you there's a very good speaker our tyagananda ji is coming and he will be speaking on the karma you know he is special he has written a very good book that book will also be available he is coming in the at the next uh, the last month uh, last of this month that our retreat will be there so if you have not registered i think it is better to listen to him he is excellent speaker and his knowledge is the very good really he was an editor for a long time so please come and thirdly please visit our website and there we have launched our e e magazine that's called chicago calling in the front page itself you will find the chicago calling and there if you go and click you will find that the whole lectures and so many wonderful thing but one particular thing almost in the last page i think every time we give arise awake and stop not a lady very humble lady and she sells green vegetables sitting on on the road itself she is not having in the, even a shop in back in india and slowly slowly her, her idea was to develop a hospital will you believe just by selling green vegetables now she is having a hospital with doctors and nurses and everything that shows the tremendous power of mind if we have the will and also striving in the same direction we can be successful please go and read that chicago calling the easy thank you